Good evening and welcome to Politics on Sunday. I am Femi Akonde. Our focus today will be on Kogi State as the political turf in that state is getting really rough. 22 candidates scrambled to get majority votes out of the 1.6 million registered voters in the North Central State. The election is already raising fears and concerns as political violence and targeted attacks have increased in the confluence state. There are also cases in courts, different courts, seeking the disqualification of some of the candidates. Uh, recently, the Court of Appeal in Abuja reserved judgments in the appeal brought before it by Senator Smart Adeyemi, seeking to nullify the governorship election primary of the All Progressives Congress that produced Ahmed Usman Ododo as the candidate of the APC. But while the APC seems to be divided against itself in Kogi State, there are also other candidates considered to be formidable and have the wit and grit to match Governor Yahya Bello, who seems to be the campaigner-in-chief for the APC governorship candidate. Well, for the People's Democratic Party's candidate, Senator Dino Melaye, he has told his supporters not to allow the All Progressives Congress intimidate them, and he insists he will clinch victory and reclaim Kogi State from bad governance. Another candidate who seems to also be a front-runner is Murtala Yakubu Ajaka of the Social Democratic Party, a former member of the All Progressives Congress and also a prominent member of its National Working Committee. Well, the SDP candidate has been in the news not only about his campaigns, but the war of wars between him and Governor Yahya Bello. These two political allies now separated by different political interests. It was reported recently that leaders of the Social Democratic Party in the three senatorial district of Kogi State and the party's chairman in all 21 local government areas of the state have jumped ship to the All Progressives Congress with just about three months to the November election. Will this take the wind off his sail? After the break, I will speak with Farouk Adejo Audu, the Director of Communications for the Murtala Ajaka campaign team. Don't go away. Well, it's been in the news that uh, some prominent members of the Social Democratic Party have defected to the All Progressives Congress, and this must really cut deep into the campaign um, plans of uh, Murtala Ajaka ahead of the November governorship election. How, how is it taking this and how is the party recovering from this? Well, we actually saw the story, the claim that some people decamped from um, the Social Democratic Party, specifically they said all the zonal chairmen of the party yeah. in um, Kogi State, that is the chairman of the um, Kogi East Senatorial District, yeah. Kogi West and Kogi Central, Central. that all the camp and all the 21, 21 local government, local government camp. Nothing. Not one person decamped. Not one person decamped. You see, we've been... Now we have seen pictures of them. We saw pictures of them in the governor's office when they decamped. They were all holding um, brooms. That's the symbol of the All Progressives Congress. <laughs> okay. I don't know the pictures. I don't know who the governor took into his office to snap and claim that they were SDP. Uh, <laughs> members of the executive. Mm -hmm. The SDP have issued a statement, okay, and of course I'm the spokesman of the campaign council. They issued a statement and they were very harsh on the governor. You see, there is, there is a limit to which a man who occupies the office of the governor is expected to descend. If it goes beyond that limit, it becomes embarrassing for everybody, including those of us who are challenging him. Mm -hmm. Because he's the governor of our state. The name of the um, uh, zonal chairman of the SDP for Kogi East. His name is Pastor Sunday Atabo. He's not there. They brought another person. That is, now you are seeing you have seen the picture. We didn't see it before. We asked, we challenged them to bring the picture. Maybe that was when they went to concord another picture and, and, and brought out. His name is, is, is Pastor Sunday Atabo. The name of the chairman for Kogi Central, mm. his name is Salawu Musa Odogba. The name of the chairman for Kogi West, his name is Emmanuel Adebayo A. So these people that uh, these people didn't visited decamp. the governor are not known to the party? No, we don't know them. We don't know them. We have challenged him to produce them. You see, if, I mean, 
it's very easy now. You can go online and check the name of the officials of the party. And the names are there. So who did you bring? You see, we have so many things like that in Kogi. So many, so many misinformation, deliberate misinformation. And the governor, I mean the governor's press secretary signed it, which means that it came directly from the governor. Indeed. And it's embarrassing to us. I mean, we, we, we're not talking about, uh, the embarrassment we're talking about is not about SDP being embarrassed. But that our governor descended to that very base level. Very base level. We contended with him in a number of ways. We, we, have, we have been trying to contain him in a number of ways. Violence, every other thing. But to get to the level of bringing fictitious people and announcing them as SDP people that have become, it's embarrassing. Let's we talk about, people you, 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 you said violence now. Yeah. This has become a serious issue in Kogi State. Whenever there is election, the state descends into violence. And it's not the first time people are, there are, are growing concerns about how elections are conducted in Kogi State. Why are politicians in Kogi State so desperate? Uh, well, I like to possibly disagree to some extent. Politicians in Kogi State are not desperate, neither are they violent. The violence is coming from one direction to other people. From which direction? From the direction of the governor. I mean, there's no, there's, there's no secret about this. There's no secret about this. Okay, as I talk to you, the SDP secretariat in Lokoja has been burnt down twice. The one in the Kina local government has been destroyed. We identified the people who burnt them down. It was led by a senior special assistant to the governor. I don't want to call his name here because, of course, it could have legal issues on yeah, the TV. You, have you to understand? But we identified him, we issued a statement, we did that, we reported to the police, the police did nothing about it. And they are not going to do anything about it. And I remind you, on June 3rd, on June 3rd, our candidate was going home to go and campaign. The governor personally led his convoy and blocked our candidate. And government came out of his convoy and opened fire on, on our candidate. Well, that incident was reported. And, you know, there seemed to be um, conflicting... Uh, There's nothing um, conflicting there, sir. Facts and all of that. There's nothing conflicting there. At least we produce... The, 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 the staff car of our candidate, we, uh, I mean the, the armored car, we, 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 we bullet uh, 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 whatever, bullet marks and all that. We produce people who were wounded in, in, in the attack and ask, but what takes a governor to use his convoy to block anybody? He hasn't denied that. He did that. He hasn't denied that. Our, our, our office has been burned down, I mean, how many times? As I talk to you now, if our candidate is going home, he goes with security, of course, based on uh, the court the ruling court and all ruling, that. Maximum security. He, maximum security. Our governor goes with almost three trucks of armed police, military, and all that. That is the only way he can go to campaign in his state. Uh, mentioning Bello, Bello. Yes. He's not on the ballot. He's not a candidate on the ballot. The candidate on the ballot is Ahmed Ododo. So what's the issue with Governor If, you, if you see Ahmed Ododo's picture, can you identify him? Yeah, I've seen him. I've seen. I've seen him on television. You must be one of the very few people who can identify him. Ahmed Odudu does not campaign now, and we don't. We don't even have any problems with Ahmed Odudu as a person. We don't have any problems. The gentleman, okay, but the governor is desperate to deliver him. Everybody knows that the the election in Kogi, you cannot mention one person, one person that has ever visited violence on anybody from the governor's side before. It is only other people that are casualties of the violence. Okay, he would have, the Ahmed Odo you are talking about, we don't have problems with him. Okay, take for instance, the governor will identify those he thinks are the strong people, then he will begin to unleash police and others on them. We will we, we challenge the former uh, uh, commissioner of police, his name is Akim uh, Adeshino. We challenge him that he, had, he was partial. We challenge the Nigerian Navy. The Nigerian Navy has an officer, and I still don't want to call his name here because I happen to be a journalist and I know these things. An officer that everybody, since 2011, and, and, and I mean, since 2017, every, almost every party that was strong in any election has petitioned against that officer. They will transfer him and bring him back. This officer leads squad to people's house. Let me give you an example. An officer of the Nigerian Navy. Yes. I can call him his name, his name if you want. No, that's not necessary. It's left for okay. the naval authorities. But we have told, we have told to the Navy, we have said this repeatedly. This officer leads people to go and attack people. In, in August 2019, before the governorship election, 
the state, I mean, the local government chairman of the PDP in Okene local government, his name is Adelabu. This officer led people and abducted Adelabu from his house. Till today, we have not seen Adelabu. Till today, that I'm talking to you. Is he in prison? Is he dead? But we at least we traced him. I, I was a member of the PDP. We traced him up to government house. Till today, we have not seen Adelabu. Mm. Natasha yeah. wrote a petition about this guy. I mean, a few months ago, uh, what do you call it? The the the, the Tregmore uh, uh, estate in Abuja was invaded. They said there was Boko Haram. They said there were stories. Who was the person? The person's name is Jamio, Jamio or, or Shafi or something like that. Shafi used to be a thug that, I mean, everybody knew in government house. His pictures and the picture of the governor, the, his picture and the picture of the chief of staff, all of them are there, just like the man who was killed in Kogi East. The moment Jamio renounced Bello, I said he was going to work for Natasha. Instantly, he was declared a, 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 a terrorist. And he now hunted him down. It was that naval officer who went there. It was the same as that officer who led people to, 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 to kill a, a Kabir. In, in but these are, these are very strong allegations. Has no one taken this up with the naval authorities or even with. Um, we have written petitions and petitions, and that is our problem. We have written petitions and petitions, and it's very unfair. Okay? If anybody, if you allow anybody through whatever means to grab power apart from the, the method prescribed by the Constitution, you use thugs, you use Navy, you use anybody. What you're actually doing is a coup d'etat. I hope they understand that. Nobody bothered. And we're going into another election and we're confronting the same issues. The same issues about somebody who, or who will not be able to win the election, but he will come with the, I mean, with, with the force of arms. The force of helicopter belonging to the Nigerian police, you know. So now look at it. If the Nigerian police can give, I mean, can use his helicopter to shoot down at voters. This, I mean, the, the footages are there. Well, but, but, it's not in doubt. But you know, you know, um, now there is a change of guard already within yes. the within the country's security architecture. Yeah. Has things improved, especially with the cooperation of security agencies to ensure their security and a safe environment for politicians to go about their business. Yes, to some extent we admit that. We admit that there's been uh, some improvement. But you see, the, 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 the problem is actually not even the security per se. The problem is the person who is the chief executive of the state, covered by the immunity, constitutional immunity and all that. All we want to do is to do election. We don't want to go into a war. All right. Then. We don't want to go into a war. Yes, yeah, so we'll take a quick break at this point. When we return, we'll talk more about the issues. What does uh, what will Murtala Yakubu Ajaka bring to the table? What is in it for the people in Kogi State? Well, that will be after this quick break. Don't go away. Welcome back. We're still talking Kogi politics ahead of the November governorship election. And my guest is Farouk Adejo Aldo. He is the spokesman of the Social Democratic Party's governorship candidate in Kogi State, Murtala Yakubu Ajaka. Yes, uh, not many people gave your candidate a chance when he left the APC. Everyone thought, uh, well, he may not be able to match Governor Yahya Bello and indeed the candidate of the APC. But it seems uh, he has come a long way and Right now, they are accusing him of whipping up ethnic sentiment that his uh, candidacy is seen as an igala agenda, sectional agenda from one particular ethnic group in the state. How would you react to that? Well, the truth of the matter is that, like we always say, is the ripest fruit that attracts the most missiles. That's the truth of the matter. There are major parties, major the ones who call major parties in the election in Kogi State. Yabilo, who was our governor and who is the self-appointed uh, uh, champion and uh, campaign manager of uh, the APC candidate Ududu. Everybody in this country will remember that he's had several occasions with uh, uh, Senator Dino Melai. Not once has he ever spoken about Senator Dino Melai in the course of this campaign. Not once. Never. So why is he targeting uh, Ajaka? What does that mean? That is to show you that Ajaka is the candidate, is the only person that scares them. They know, and Yabelu actually knows that in a free and fair contest, his candidate cannot even come third. Because there's, apart from my candidate, there's Dino, there's um, 
Lake uh, 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 a member of the House of Reps, uh, who is running under ADC. ADC. You understand? Those candidates, free and fair, people will pick them above, I mean, before they pick uh, Abelos candidate. I don't want to call him APC candidate. Three of the candidates are from the staple of the, of, staple of the, of the APC. That is Ajaka, Ududu, and uh, Abejide. These are people who came out of the APC. Okay? Okay. Now, what happened in the APC? Ajaka, on the morning of the primaries, Ajaka, there was a, a local jail high court. A local jail high court brought a restraining order. Morning of the primaries, and said this man cannot participate in the election. On the morning of the election. That's Ododo? No, Ajaka now. Okay. Ajaka was a candidate. Ajaka was an aspirant. Aspirant, yeah. God did everything, was cleared and everything. On the morning, they took Ajaka by ambush. Produce just produced from their pocket, brought um, a restraining order that one of the judges in Lokoja have uh, issued a restraining order against Ajaka. And that is to show you the level to which a lot of institutions in Kogi states have um, descended. Kogi state judiciary happens to be one of the best. But what you now have now, what you have now, are judges who are scared of the governor and may, must have to do his bit and i'll give you i'll tell you why the former chief judge of the state his name is uh, justice nancy rajana justice nancy was one of the best juries in this in this country one of the best juries an upright judge nobody there was nobody who didn't know him at a point he would think uh, i mean from his own complaint before he died the governor was trying to get him to do one thing or the other, and he refused. Then the governor started dragging him. Caught light to his house, caught water, caught telephone, and started hounding him. He took him to the NJC. The NJC found no fault with Ajana, and they couldn't indict him. He said Ajana had embezzled money, Ajana did this, Ajana did that. There was nothing he didn't do. At the point, Ajana couldn't live in local Janima. Ajana was hiding in Abuja here. That was the chief judge of Kogi State. Then one day, the Nazi Ajana had had come down with uh, COVID. Then they evacuated him from Lokoja to Wawalada. And the next thing we heard was that Ajana had died. Ajana never had breath problem. He never had anything. The only problem he ever had was problem with Bilu. Then all of a sudden Ajana died. Nothing. Ajana died on song. Nobody remembers Ajana today. So that was how Ajaka now went to SDP. Now you are not complaining that Ajaka is popular amongst his base. Okay? We can't deny this. In Nigeria, you are either Yoruba or Igbo or whatever, whatever. When you come down to the states, of course, you also have the other micro ethnicities. Yeah. Now, if, you, if Ajaka is not popular in his place, the place he comes from, why should any other person want to vote for him? You are not popular where you come from. Why should anybody want to support you? Ajaka is popular where he comes from. Can we say that for Ududu? Ududu, that is. Can we say that for Ududu? Is Ududu popular in this place? Who is Ududu? Ududu is Belo's cousin. After doing eight years as governor, let's even as you see, Belo tries as much as possible to divide our people. Okay, he now says yes. Uh, uh, that, uh, after eight years as governor, you now took the governor back to your not only back to your senatorial district, you took it to your local government, you took it to your ward, and took it to your cousin. Okay, then at the end of the day, you now say uh, the other person is is is, is, an, is is a tribalist. You that you are not just I mean. Nepotism. You are a nepotist. When you are taking something to your cousin, the person who is now, the person that you think is, is, is gaining popularity amongst the, his base in his area, you are calling me a tribalist. You that you have done the entire Kogi Central, you didn't see, you didn't see Ogori, you didn't see anybody, you didn't see even your own Ibera people. You took it to your cousin. You are now complaining that another person is a tribalist. How, how logical is that? Okay, what's his support base like outside Kogi East? In the west and in the central, it's very heavy. The only place that you cannot really uh, talk of an overt support group is in the central, for reasons that we know. If, I'll give you an example. When we did 2019 election, even our PDP people, a lot of them didn't go home. They couldn't go home because the violence. That was that is Belo's own base. You attempt that and check something. The votes that emerged from Kogi Central in 2019 was about 240,000 votes. The last presidential election we did was 105,000 votes. At no time 
at no time had Kogi Central pulled up, up to 150,000 votes before. But the vote that came out of Kogi Central, was it voters turned out? It wasn't. But maximum violence was brought to bear in that area, intimidation, you know, and all that. Then Belo was able to monkey with the results. That was what happened. Check, check the trajectory of election. Kogi Central has not polled 150 at any point before. Okay? If you check in the other major parties, you have the uh, PDP, you have the ADC, uh, okay, you, you, uh, even the APC. You will see that at least you find one Gala person say, look, I'm supporting Ododo. You find one Yoruba man say, I'm supporting Ododo. Tell me, tell me of one person, one person from Kogi Central who has declared that I'm supporting Dino or I'm supporting, apart from Natasha, and I, of course we know Natasha, apart from Natasha, apart from Natasha Apoti, you cannot call one other name of anybody from Kogi Central who says I'm supporting Dino or I'm supporting Ajaka or I'm supporting Abijidi. Why so? Because they are scared of Belo now. It's not because, it's not because they, they, they think that they must, they, 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 it's not because they are, they, I mean, they are tribalists or anything. But if you do that, what happens so maybe, to you? Maybe what? silently they will use their votes to speak. Well, maybe. But uh, that is a tall order. Well, let's talk that about is um, issues now. How well does Amrita Lajaka understand Kogi State, the needs of the people, and what are his plans to meeting some of these um, needs? Amrita Lajaka was born in Kogi State. He went to um, uh, Polytechnic, uh, Federal Polytechnic, Nursery and Primary School in Ida. He grew up there. He went to secondary school in uh, Barewa and came back to Kogi. Went to Kogi Poly. And all that. He practically brought up in Kogi. He understands and knows Kogi State. I mean, our manifesto is very clear about it. Okay? The major issue we have in Kogi is the issue of poverty. And this issue of poverty had been aggravated by the eight years of the rule of Belu, where people don't collect salary. As I talk to you, even his own appointees, members of his cabinet, are owed like four to six months salary, between four and six months salary. And the people who are civil servants, nobody knows for sure how much is his wage. Is, I mean, it's his take, his take home pay. Any day you come, what, they, what you see on your pay slip, you take. You can never hear of uh, NLC or any worker who talk of areas. There's no such thing as areas of payment. Whatever they pay, you collect it. That's what's been happening. So poverty has been thoroughly aggravated in Kogi State. So the first thing that Ajaka will ad address is, is the issue of poverty. Under uh, Governor Wada, for instance, there was explosion in rice production in Kogi. Belo came and met this advantage and said he has uh, started one rice mill somewhere in uh, Kogi West. Till today, that rice mill does not work anymore. After the stock, after the, 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 the stock that was left by Wada was exhausted, was sold out. Nothing. There's no Kogi rice. You used to see conflict rice. Conflict rice, there's no more conflict rice. We're already, we're already rivaling a, a state in the production of rice. Mm. But now you don't have it anymore. So our people are basically poor. Civil servant, they say Kogi is a civil service state. Yes, that is partially correct because we're not tapping the resources that we have. But the civil servants that we're talking about, they are civil servants that are owed up to three months, I mean three years salary. I know of a colleague. Three years. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, the deputy governor had admitted at a point in, the, in an interview with a, 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 a national TV when they said three years, it wasn't three years, it was two, two years and uh, ten months or something like that. Hmm. It, was, it was something that went viral at the point. I know of a colleague, a journalist like us, who was brought in to come and be general manager of, uh, of, uh, one, of one of the corporations in Kogi State. The guy spent about four or five years there and in total which is collected was less than one year before he ran out of the place. Before he ran out of the place. If you see the, if you see the, the, the allocation that has come to Kogi State in the past, close to, I mean, by January to the eight years of Belo, the allocation that has come to Kogi State is well over 500 billion. We can sit down here and tabulize it, I mean, and, and, and do a table of it. Well over 500 billion. Where, where is the money? If you talk, you will point at one overhead bridge that is less than uh, 400 meters. I see that is achievement. And don't you think um, there's so much focus on the governor and the APC, forgetting other candidates, like you mentioned, there's Abejide and there's Dino Milai. Mm -hmm. Are you, is your candidate not distracted with 
the battle or running battle is having with the governor and the APC. Like we said earlier, there are four major candidates in the race, four major candidates. Anybody who is sincere and is from Kogi State will tell you that Ajaka is number one. Number one. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's number one. Ajaka, let's even assume, let's take their own argument that Ajaka has support in Kogi East. Ajaka has support in Kogi East. I hope you have the footages of slides of, of we have started rally. At a point, he went to a wedding. Over 5,000 people turned out because they heard he was coming. Yesterday, he went to open an office in a place called Egume, and the crowd there could not be controlled by anybody. Okay? So let's take the argument that Ajaka has support base in Kogi East. Kogi East is about 50% of the state. Kogi East is about 50% of the state, voting population. So if you have almost a near total support there, Find out. There's no other candidate that comes close there. The only thing we see APC do there is either go and kill one person or burn down one person or go and destroy billboard and all that. That is the only thing they come there to do. But if you see, if you see people from Kogi, if you see people from Kogi, go to Lokonja, forget about Kogi is now. Go to Lokonja, meet a civil servant, either in Bira or Yoruba or anything. Ask him, who are you likely to vote for? I challenge the Nigerian media to go and do a survey, an empirical survey. Any media that can put his name, put your name on it, go and do an empirical survey. If it comes back, if it comes back that less than 65% of co guys are supporting Ajaka, me, I will resign as the director of communication. This is why I'm talking about factual. So that is why, I mean, a man who used to hunt Dino everywhere, drag Dino at the point he locked Dino up in his house over one week, Dino was jumping through the roof, climbing tree, and doing all sorts of things, jumping away from cars. Now Dino is contesting for governor and he's not worried. He hasn't disturbed Dino one day. The man he used to consider an, an arch enemy. Do you understand? He hasn't disturbed Dino one day. His focus is Ajaka. Ajaka moves with, with, with military men, with, uh, with soldiers, with police, carrying almost 40 to 50 people to, to protect himself and protect support and each time he's coming out. Ajaka is going around campaigning. Ajaka is talking, mounting the rostrum and addressing people. Let's come, they come and mount the rostrum and address people. Let's Oh, I will wait for that time to see the candidate of the APC mount the rostrum. I will wish you and your candidate the very best as you go into um, the campaigns ahead of November election. Well, that's our package this week. Do remember you can see this episode again on TVC News YouTube channel. Subscribe, like and share. Also, follow me on X at Femi Akonde. TVC. Thank you for watching. See you next time.